Yes, what a blessing. Do you have a sanctuary? A place where God's Spirit can dwell. Pure and clean. Holy. God is holy. And His Spirit can only dwell where there is holiness. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we do come before thee at this hour of the day. Thanking you and praising you for your blessings, great and small, and for the power of God, which is under salvation to all that believe. Thank you for your love. Granting us, dear Lord, the opportunity to spend yet one more day with thee. You awaken us this morning, clothed in our right mind, and with a determination to press on ward. Father, we thank you for your love and all the protection around about us, shielding us from all that harm and danger and the sins of this world, leading us, Father, not into temptation, but delivering us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom. All power belongeth unto thee forever and always. Thank you for touching our bodies, healing us of afflictions, encouraging us to press on. Father, we thank you for touching Sister Robinette's body and then for raising her up. And then, Father, with a testimony of the power that still lies within the Almighty God. Thank you for those family members, dear Lord, that have come together to make sure that she is moving in the right direction with meals that she should have, supplements to the diet, to be able to get her back on track. So Father, we thank you. Go through the convalescent homes, the jail houses, the hospitals. Remember those doctors and nurses and the care that they have to give and the situations that they have to deal with. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will give them the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to be able to endure as good soldiers of the medical field. Remember those on the battlefield, dear Lord, and are fighting for the freedom of others. Remember the Ukrainian people, dear Lord, as they suffer at the hands of brutality. War. This country, they often pray from the weakness he said, and then you will hear from heaven and heal the land. So we thank you. Remember the ministers that stand behind the pulpits today, dear Lord, that they may declare the gospel of peace, wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and that they may keep their hands clean, their hearts pure. That that which comes forth from them may not be chucked to the side because of something that is not right with them. Thou knowest all things. We pray, dear Lord, that you will remember those that we that you will remember those that we have not and cannot call by name who need and stand in need of your blessing right now. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and for his sake. We thank you. Remembering all, dear Lord. <clears throat> Here and there, up and down, those on highways and the byways, that you will bless them and strengthen them. Bless the sister Tamika to go up every day over the dangerous highways, watching over the family while she's gone, and, and then bringing her mother up out of the pits of darkness and blessing her to be able to be alive today. And for that, we say thank you. Thine will be done, dear Lord, in earth as it is in heaven, this and every day of our lives. We want to thank thee both now and forevermore. 
Together can we all say amen. <clears throat> Give an honor to God today and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel, to the deacon, to the congregation, those that are tuning in, we say good afternoon and may God bless you. For truly God is good and his mercy endures to all generations. Thank God for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect. First being to God, then to leadership. And then to one another. Thank God for the sparks from the anvil of page three of your programs today. First one says your actions are sometimes so nice while your heart is so nasty. Hmm. Isn't that something? Your actions are sometimes so nice while your heart is so nasty. People are iffy today. Sometimey. Amen. And you have to deal with it as children of God. Show love, as one brother was mentioning. This woman going off on somebody's Tesla. Hmm banging on the hood and whatnot. Amen. Heart is just nasty. The second says, we don't have millions, but we have what millions want. Peace of mind. Joy of heart. I worked for a man that had Millions. And in every corner, he had a camera watching. He didn't have no peace. So afraid that somebody going to take something from him. No peace of mind. And when you have Jesus, he's the Prince of Peace. And millions want to have what you have, but the only hope is in Jesus. He's the answer. The third says people who represent God must be, must, must be respected. And watch this now. And respectable. You're going to represent the king of heaven? Then you must be respectable. And if you are respectable, God will see to it that you are respected. Because he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. He didn't allow them to do the prophet any harm. And so on the back of your program, <clears throat> it says deception is one of Satan's greatest devices. Deception. A wolf, so saith our Lord, in sheep's clothing. There's that. Spark from the anvil, your actions are sometimes so nice while your heart is so nasty. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Hmm. Raveling about the earth, seeking whom he may destroy. 
a false pretender hiding amongst the flock, seeking for any weak soul to capture. Isn't that something? But to know Satan, you'll have to know Jesus. And then you'll escape his ultimate purpose. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life. But the thief cometh that he might steal, kill, and then destroy. But I have come that you have might have life and then have it more abundantly. Satan's ultimate purpose is to steal, kill, and then destroy. But we can thank God for sending us an example that we have before us day in and day out to follow, amen, to follow. And on the front of your program, it says, Satan is the master of deception. He works at it every day. He's good at it, church. He's good at it. He's the master of deception. <clears throat> And unless you know the truth, that's why it's important to have the truth. Unless you know the truth, it's just like the brother was speaking about his child. Coming home with a word, because <clears throat> they're here around the school. Satan is all up into the Christian school. Ain't that something? He's everywhere. Amen. He even go to church on Sunday. Oh, yeah. He goes to church on Sunday. He's one of the most faithfulest members. The elder said he's one of the most faithfulest members in the church. Because he's floating around seeking a weak soul that he can capture. And when he captures you, he will use you to his benefit. He's the master of deception. And unless you know the truth, look it up. Don't just say, can I say that word? Look it up. And thank God for teaching right from wrong. Because then once they understand the definition, they make the right choice. So give an honor to God today and to each and every one of you, your testimonies of how that the Lord has brought Sister Robinette up out of to see the light. <clears throat> you see, the kidneys are a very important organ in the body. When it is not functioning properly, then those bad things that have a tendency to float around in the body is not being dealt with properly. So God has revitalized the kidneys, found the problem, and it was dealt with. Now she's on the road of recovery. Thank God. Amen. I thank God for my wife. Thank God for salvation, being free. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for the church of God. Thank God for the man and the woman of God. 
Thank God for this being black history and, and how that we have been speaking about the African Americans that we know and have dealt with that has made a difference that has made a difference in society, in America as a whole. <clears throat> Our founder, Ella Lightfoot Solomon Mishaw, was one of these who did great things and have yet to have his day. But he's been talked about more this month than ever before in this generation because he has done great things. And so we thank God for the fact that he established the church of God. Beginning in 1919, then showed up here in 1928. And today, the church of God still exists. And the evidence of that is the standard of righteousness that was implicated way back then. Righteousness is what exalts sin as a reproach to any people. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, and it is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank God for he and his wife who taught purity. And they started, Sister Michelle, with the youth in Purity Club, teaching them how to abstain from the very appearance of evil. Sex outside the marriage is a sin. Wine is a mark of strong drink is rage, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. These things were taught from the beginning. And it is still being taught and lived today. Hereby shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one toward the other. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. So we thank God indeed for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect. It first being to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God for my seat in the congregation of the righteous. Thank God for the desired determination. Church, it is important for us to understand that Satan is the master of deception. And unless you know the truth, he can deceive you. And once you become deceived, you become misplaced. And Satan's aim and object is to steal, kill, and then destroy. For Jesus have come that we might have life, and that we might have it more abundantly. And we gather this life through the truth, knowing what is. Satan told Eve, thou shall not surely die. And because she didn't know the truth, he deceived her. And she ate of that forbidden tree, and she gave unto her husband, and he did eat. And you find that because of that, death fell on us all. But then Christ came to redeem us. 
So we thank God for that. Today we want to speak to you about whiten, that's W-H-I-T-E-D, sepulchers. Amen. Whiten sepulchers. That's S-E-P. U-L-C-H-R-E-S. Pure and simple, a tomb. Whiten sepulchers. Amen. Can I get a reading? In the book of Hebrews, in the book of Jeremiah, excuse me, when you speak of whiten, paint it, paint it, or turn something white. And when you think of something that is white, you think of something that is pure and clean. And all around the world, you have these whitened support sepulchers, beautiful stones, Polished up. But guess what? They're just full of dead men's bones. Dead men's bones, that's all that's in them. But yet they got that beautiful structure. Sepulchers are small rooms or monuments cut in a rock or built of stone in which a dead person is laid or buried. That's all it is. And there's so much beautification to these graves. These boxes, or these holes in the side of the mountains just full of dead bones. But on the outside, it's beautiful. But church, it's not what's on the outside that counts with God. It's what's on the inside. Amen. So in the book of Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, <clears throat> Ninth verse beginning says what? The heart is deceitful above all things. The heart. The heart. People can smile, look pleasant, but nasty on the inside. The heart is deceitful above all things, read. And desperately wicked. And it is desperately wicked. Read. Who can know it? The question is asked, who can know it? Next verse says, who? I, the Lord. I, the Lord, what? Search the heart. I search the heart. I try the reins. I try the reins. Even to give every man Even to give every man according to, to his what? Ways. His ways and what? And according to the fruit of his doings. Sunday school was talking about fruits today. The fruits of the spirit and the works of the flesh. Whiten. Tombstones cut out of the rock, built of stone in which dead people are laid. The heart. Amen. I the Lord search the heart. I try to arrange even to give every man according to his ways and according to his what? The fruit of his doing. In the book of Habakkuk. Second chapter. Amen, I have it. I happen to be reading 
opening up and reading. And so the Lord had led me to keep reading. Keep reading. Keep reading. You're going to see something. And I was in that second chapter, and I got down to the 18th verse. Now listen to what he says. What profiteth the graven image, the graven image that what? That the maker thereof have graven it. What does a grave matter that you're going to beautify it to a certain degree? It's full of dead men's bones. But yet there is so much emphasis played on these sepulchres. Engraving it. The malted image. And, and what? And a teacher of lies. And a teacher of lies. Read. And a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. The malted image and a teacher and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make what? Dumb idols. Yes, you wonder now, where are we going with this, Pastor? You know I got an angle. Watch this, read. Woe unto him that saith unto the wood. Woe unto him that saith to the sepulcher, the sepulcher, the tomb, the grave site. Read. Awake. Awake. To the dumb stone arise. And then you're going to tell the dumb stone, the dumb stone now to arise. Read. It shall teach. Wait a minute, Pastor. Where are you going with this? The dumb stone going to teach? Prophet said, dumb dogs that won't bark. Read this, Father. Be what? Behold. Behold is, what? It is laid over with gold. Laid over with gold. It's beautified with gold and silver. And guess what? Read. And there is no breath at all. Ain't no breath at all in, in, the in midst it. Of it. So what's the benefit? Satan is a master of deception. He's a great deceiver. Watch this now, read. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth. Let all the earth keep silence before him. In all of this that you see going on, Habakkuk says, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let the earth keep silent before him. Now Isaiah had something to say in the eighth chapter, twentieth. Nineteen and twenty. <clears throat> Listen to this. And when they say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto the wizards whoa, 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 that peep. Whoa, 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 Hold tight. Read that again. 
And when they shall say unto you. And when they shall say, you know, sometime when you get in trouble, they got these suit sales. Somebody that handles spirits, as they call it. And then they got an individual that's called a psychiatrist. Where you're supposed to go and lay down on the couch and tell him all your problems. And they're supposed to devise a system along with some medication to get you back on track. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth do what? Keep silent. So that 19th verse says what again? And when they shall say unto you. When they say unto you what? Seek unto them that have familiar spirit. And unto the wizards. Wizards that peep. And, and that mutter. The question is this. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? You got a problem and God can't fix it? He made us. He created us. He knew all about us. He formed us. He breathed into our nostril the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Without him, we can do nothing because in him we do what? We move, we live, we have our state of being. Without him, we are nothing. But yet, in troubled times, we go to whiten sepulchre. Huh? Whiten sepulchers. Watch this now. Read. To the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to what? This, this word, word is because of what? There is no light in them. Dead men's bones. So why are you running to somebody that's dead? Huh? Good question. Listen, turn to St. Matthews. <clears throat> Jesus in the 23rd chapter. Boy, he was fired up on these hypocrites and liars and deceptive. He called them vipers. Scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Oh, he was cranked up in the 23rd chapter. He was, he was cranked up. But we're going to go on down to the uh, 23rd verse of that 23rd chapter. <laughs> Listen to this. What did I say, St. Matthew? Twenty-three, twenty-three. Watch this. He said, "What? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees! Woe! Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees! You hypocrites!" He's dealing with the so-called righteous people now. The teachers, the preachers. They're supposedly to be a benefit unto you. Jesus called them hypocrites. Woe unto you. What else he said? Read. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier you, you, matters you, of the law. You, you, you're dealing with these plants and things that have an aroma to them like mint. All of these things are important to dress up. But inside, inside, deceitful.
hatefulness, hatred, malice. Inside, this is what's going on in what? Read. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These things, these things, these things. You, you should not even omit these things. You, you have gone and done all of this. Dealing with the beautification, just like you go out here and you wash up and get ready, put your clothes on, you go to church, and you got hatred in your heart. Some don't even want to be in church. <laughs> but you're going to keep somebody from talking about you. <laughs> well, I'm going to see what he going to wear today. I'm going to see what kind of shoes she got on today. Oh, y'all, y'all check each other out, you know. Churches to learn how to love one another, work together in the spirit of unity and love, and then how to get to heaven. You worrying about something else. Watch this now, read. These are ye have done to have done, and, and not to leave the other undone. Read. Ye blind guides. What? Ye blind guides, which strain Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Here you are standing behind the pulpit and blind. The Lord said the blind lead the blind, they both going to fall into the ditch. Ye blind guides, Brother Matt know all about the guides. He go to D.C. and he guiding people around here, guiding people around there. But you got to study to know your stuff. Because everybody on the tour is an ignorant. They want to check and see what you know. You blind God, read. Which strain at a net. Strain at a net and do what? And swallow a camel. Isn't that something? The little things you can't handle, but the big things you don't swallow it all down. You're going to swallow a camel, but strain and choking on just the little things that matter. Read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees. He said, Woe unto you, hypocrites. Read. For ye may clean the outside of the cup. You clean the outside of the cup. And of the platter. And of the platter, but what? But within there are But with inside. The heart God is talking about. Inside is what? Within they are full of extortion and excess. Ooh. Taking advantage of someone. Scheming. Brother told a joke about a man that had a little money, money and decided to stop by his little old church. <clears throat> so it came time to talk up, take up the offering. He didn't, he didn't have no change. Cause most rich folks, you know, they, they don't deal in one dollar bills and five dollars. They have hundreds. So he put a hundred dollar bill in there, and he told the usher, he says, "I need change." So the usher went up to the pastor. They ain't seen no hundred dollar bills in no basket. I said, Pastor, this man gave a hundred dollars. Said he wants some change. So the pastor said, You just hold on a minute. I'm gonna preach a little bit. The pastor got up there and he started preaching. Oh, he started preaching. Trying to hold on to that man's hundred dollars. The man said, preach on, preacher. 
But I'm going to wait till my change comes. Full of dead men's bones. Extortion. Trying his best to take advantage of someone for a few dollars. Go ahead and preach, preacher. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till my change comes. And when you think about it, you think about somebody making a change. No, he waiting on his change to come. Read, bro. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter. Cleanse that first. Cleanse first that which is within the, the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be what? Clean also. The heart is deceitful. Clean up on the inside. Whiten sepulchres. Huh? Watch this now. Read. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, what? hypocrites. For you what? For you are like whitened sepulchres. You are indeed. like whitened sepulchres, which indeed appear what? Beautiful, Beautiful outward, outward, but? But are within full of dead men's bones. Woo. And of all things. You got preachers standing in the pulpit today, all polished. Got their white collars turned around, robes down. And no light in them. Blind leading the blind. I challenge all you. Ask the pastor. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Woo. Have you been born of the spirit and of the water? Because you look good outside, but I want to know, do you have the keeping power in you? And if they can't answer you, you better run. That's why I thank God for being saved, sanctified, and kept by the power of the Almighty God. The evidence is I can sit in front of you and ask you a question in Q&A and give you the answer. Most ministers will not do that. They'll tell you to put it down on a piece of paper and I'll get back with you later. Question. Go ahead. I, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you question. <laughs> Call them up. Hey, Amen. If you can't get to them, because some of them you can't get to unless you go through the secretary. Call them up. So I want to ask you something, Pastor. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Like they told Paul and them, we, we haven't heard whether there any, is any kind of Holy Ghost. Well then, who's in you to teach? The Holy Ghost, the anointing is the teacher. You got to have it. If not, you are blind and you are leading the blind. And everybody going to fall in the ditch. You know what the ditch is? Hell. Read a little further, brother. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Ha! Huh. And what? But within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woo! Boy, Jesus was cranked up. No wonder they hung him on the cross. You're full of hypocrisy. Lying, stealing, cheating. 
Got two wives, one in Africa and one in America. Neither one of them know about the other. Only one know about it is you and Jesus. Watch them keep running over there in Africa by themselves. Huh? They can sweat now. They can hoop, they can holler. They can jump, they can shout. But they can't live right. Because there's no keeping power. You gotta have some power in you in this day and time. Because the devil is a trickster. He's the master of deception. And he can make you think that everything is circling around you. And you'll believe it. Uh-uh. It's all about Jesus. Whiten sepulchers. Read, brother. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. hypocrites, for you what? Because you build the tombs of the prophets. You build the tombs of the prophets, read. And garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, read. And say, if we had been in if the days we of had our been, fathers, If we had been in the days of our father, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. But Jesus said what? Read. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourself. That you are what? That ye are children of them which killed the prophets. Because your actions speaks louder than your words. Wherefore what? Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. Ye what? Ye serpents, ye generation Ooh. of vipers. Isn't that something? You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape what? The, the damnation, damnation of, hell. of hell. So I'm challenging you. Go to your pastor. Oh, he can preach, child. Yeah, but can he live, child? Can he walk like Jesus? Talk? Oh. Man, you serpents, generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Whoo! Listen, <clears throat> go to 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. See if we can't step along here. <clears throat> Second Corinthians <clears throat> eleventh. Second Corinthians eleven chapter. Begin at the first verse. Listen to this. <clears throat> Second what? Corinthians eleven one. Would to God what? Ye could bear with me a little in my folly. Paul began to express himself. Bear with me a little bit. Amen. Read. And indeed bear with me. Read. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. With godly jealous. Read. You know there's one thing about God. He's a jealous God. If he's made you, he's healed your body, he deserves the credit. Huh? He deserves the credit. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of what? His path let us enter his course in, with praise and bless whose name? Dr. So-and-so? Brother was talking about them dead bones. He asked the question, can these bones live? Thou knowest. But Ezekiel, what I want you to do is to prophesy to these bones. 
Ezekiel prophesied and right on down through to say the bone came to its bone. The anchor bone didn't go to the knee bone. It went to its bone, connected. And after they all stood upon their feet, he said, prophesy to the wind. And breath had entered into him, and it was a mighty army. Mighty army. From them dry bones. So bear with me a little, Paul said. For I'm jealous over you with godly jealous, for I have espoused you to what? One husband. One husband, not two or three or four or five husbands, but one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God who is over all, in us all, and through us all. Read. That I may present you as a chaste virgin. To chaste virgin. Read. But I fear less by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Just as the serpent. Remember, we're talking about Satan. Satan is the master of deception. He beguiled Eve through his smartness. He was keen. Thou shalt not surely die. The Lord knows that if you eat of this, your eyes will come open and you'll become wise. Woo. You put that in front of a woman today? Oh, Lord. She got to have some Holy Ghost. She going to jump at it. Eve did. She's the first created woman by God. She jumped at it. Read. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For I fear, third verse beginning again, but I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, what? So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's simple. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You got to believe the gospel. And whenever you open up, and allow the word to come in. The word, the power of the word will drive out all of the little isms and schisms that you might be able to bear good fruit. Read. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, Read. or if ye receive another spirit which, which ye have not received, or what? Or another gospel which ye have not accepted, you what? ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostle, but though I be rude in speech, yet what? Not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in what? All things. Not some things, but all things pertaining to salvation. Read. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted? Because? Because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. Freely? I rob all the churches, taking wages of them to do what? Do you service. Read. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was what? Chargeable to no man. To no man for that which what? Lacking to me the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in, in all, all things, things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. Whew. Tell you what, you don't pay some preachers today. As one person say, it all depends on what they want. I'll give it to them. If they want to shout, I'll shout. If they want to do this, I'll do that. It all depends on what they want. My aim and object is that your soul might be saved. I'm not here to please you. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm to help you to get right. <clears throat> and that don't set straight with some folks. Amen. Read. 
As the truth of Christ is in me. As the truth of Christ is in me, Paul says, read. No man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Ah, read. Wherefore? Read. Because I love you not. Because I love you not, God no. knoweth. But what I do, that I will do. Do that what? That I may cut off occasion from them that desire occasion. Read. Wherein they glory, they may be found even as we are. As For such what? For such are false prophets. Woo. Dead men's bones. Whitened sepulchres. Beautiful on the outside. Oh, they can throw down. They, they just, oh, man. But the inside, empty. 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 Brother talking to a brother today, and he was telling me about this pastor they installed down there in Newport News. He don't even have a message. But yet he's the pastor. He don't have a message. Got to call somebody else in there to preach for him because he don't have a message. Full of dead men's bones. Whitened, whitened sepulchres, but inwardly, nothing. Isn't that something? But he's the pastor. But he don't have a message for the people. Interesting, isn't it? Watch this, read. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers. Deceitful workers, read. Transforming themselves into the listen, apostles. Listen to it. Transforming themselves into the apostles of, of Christ. Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into what? An angel of light. Therefore what? Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. What you dealing with, church? What you dealing with? What you dealing with, people? If they don't have the spirit of God, guess whose spirit they possess? Satan. And you are being preached to by Satan, no wonder you don't get up out of your lying and stealing and cheating and drinking wine and drinking beer and things of this nature. A song I wrote years ago, tell me why do you tarry in your sins? When the Lord is there to receive you, bless you and keep you, tell me why. The wages of sin is death. Whiten sepulchres. Read, brother. Whose end shall be according to their what? works. What? Whose end shall be according to their works. Whose ends shall be according to their works. In the book of Philippians, <clears throat> third chapter. See if we can't finish up here, brother. <clears throat> 17th, seven, 17, 317. Brethren, what? Brethren, be followers together of me. And what? Mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. You see, if we continue in the word, and we speak according to the word. It's because of the light of Christ is in us. Read that again. Brethren, be you followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for what? An example. In example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are what? They are enemies, of, enemies the of, of the cross of Christ, whose end is what? Destruction. And if you're being led by someone that is on their way to hell, what do you think you're going to end up? Where? Read. Whose God is their belly? 
Ah. Mm. Whose God is their belly? Read. And whose glory is in their shame. Glory is in their shame with what? With mine earthly things. Earthly things. Read. For our conversation is in heaven. But our conversation, church, is in heaven. From whence also what? We look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he's coming one day. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. Therefore, we must constantly expound upon the fact that he could come at any moment. In an hour that you think not, he's coming. And if you know in these things, what matter of person ought you so to be? You don't want to obey your husband. You don't want to obey your mom. You don't want to obey your father. You don't want to love your wife. He's coming. He's coming. And he's coming in an hour that you, 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 you think not. You sitting there sucking on that Budweiser. You gonna suck throughout eternity, huh? Sucking on that nasty, dirty cigarette. Lying and stealing, cheating, fornicating. Whiting. Sepulchres. You look good. Oh, yeah, you look good on the outside. But inside, full of dead men's bones. Read. Let's see if we can't finish up. Read. Who shall change our vile body? Ah, for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change the vile body into what? That it may be fashioned like unto his Like unto his body. what? Glorious body. Ooh, holiness. Holiness. Nothing dead about Christ. And when they went to his tomb, guess what? He's not here. Where did he lay him? He's not here. He has risen. Huh? Amen. Read, brother. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things, all things unto read, himself. Unto himself. He has the power to bring you all in. Correct you. Chasten you. Love you. Purify you. And then take you with him. He has the power. Amen? Whiten sepulchers. Beautiful on the outside, but inside full of dead men's bones. But when they went to look for Jesus, he was not there. Why? Watch this now. Watch this now. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Amen. Do you hear truth today? Lord say you shall know the truth. Truth shall what? Make you free. Satan is the master of deception. And he's got those tombs all furbished and white. But what's inside? Bones, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. But where is Christ? Seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Truly, we thank God. Thank you, brother.
Thank you, congregation. Let us not be a whitened sepulcher, but let us be filled with the spirit of love. Jesus on the inside, who will work on the outside. Oh, what a change. Amen. 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 Turn the service back over to Brother Matt. Keep me in your prayers. Thank you.